Hey everyone, it's Blake here with ChessPathways.com, and today we're going to be talking about the ready opening. Now, I've actually heard two different definitions be given for what the ready opening is. Some people say that this move, one knight to f3, itself constitutes the ready opening. Some others say that the ready only begins after knight f3, d5, and c4. I'm mostly going to be going with this second definition, simply because I think there's some other moves here white can play that I wouldn't really consider a ready opening. For example, here g3 on move 2, this is going to be a king's Indian attack. And if white were to simply play d4 on move 2, this is certainly not a ready opening. This is just a normal queen's pawn opening, just as if white had played d4 on move 1. But after knight f3, d5, and c4, this is the main idea of the ready opening. Putting pressure on this center uh, without using your central pawns yet, white's going to keep those central pawns flexible. And this looks very similar to the English opening. In fact, there's a lot of lines that transpose to an English opening, which is 1c4. Uh, for example, if black played e6 here, this could certainly arise from an English opening. Just to show it, uh, that would be the exact same thing as after c4, e6, knight f3, d5. The move order doesn't really matter. So I covered those kind of setups in my video on the English, which I'll put down in the description. If black simply defends this pawn, we transpose to an English opening. But let's consider some of black's other possible moves here. First of all, they can accept this gambit. They can take our pawn here on c4. This is called the ready gambit accepted, but white's usually not going to have much trouble getting this pawn back, and if white can win this pawn back, now white's going to have this central pawn majority, two central pawns against black's one. Very similar idea, of course, to the queen's gambit. So white has several moves here. e3 can be played, simply trying to win this pawn back on the next turn. And after, for example, knight to f6, bishop takes c4, black can play here e6, and now white could play d4, leading right back to a line from the queen's gambit accepted, after black strikes at the center with c5, or white could try to keep this game in more original territory and just castle for now and not commit the essential pawns yet, kind of more in the spirit of the ready opening. After g takes c4, white could also just play knight a3, trying to recapture here with the knight, and it's kind of a similar story here. Black's not really going to be able to hold on to this pawn too well. Black could try something like bishop e6 here, but after simply e3, maybe followed by queen c2, this pawn's just going to fall. So black usually won't play that. After knight a3, black could play something like c5, just gaining some space there in the center. And after knight takes c4, knight f6, white could play here g3, and I think this illustrates Reddy's idea very well. Just don't commit the central pawns too early, keep it flexible, develop your minor pieces first, and put pressure on the center from afar, and that's really what White's doing right now. Going back here after c4 on move 2, this move order also gives Black the added possibility to play d4 here and grab a space advantage. You usually won't see something like this in an English opening, and White has many ways to play here. In a sense, this is kind of a Benoni defense with reversed colors where black has the advanced d-pawn, and white has the advanced uh, pawn here on the queen side. Uh, white could play here e3, trying to strike back at this advanced pawn right away, and if black were to exchange on e3, white's probably going to recapture with the f-pawn, trying to build a big center here after a later d4, when white has a big central pawn mass. So black usually won't take there. Black could play c5 to reinforce this pawn, uh, or possibly knight c6, uh, just to reinforce this pawn for now. So that's one way the game could go. Also after d4, white doesn't have to challenge that pawn immediately. White can go ahead and fianchetto here and play g3, putting this bishop on the long diagonal now that this pawn is out of the way. I just pulled together one sample line here. Black can play c5, bishop g2, knight c6, d3, e5, and it's looking very much like a mainline Benoni but with reversed colors. But white might consider their extra tempo to come in handy at some point. After castles, knight f6, white can begin trying to tear down black's space advantage by playing e3. Black does have a space advantage, but it's kind of nice from white's perspective that black is still a couple moves away from getting castled. White's already castled, so white would love to open up this center and try to make use of black's uncastled king, for example, by putting a rook or a queen on this e-file and generating some pressure. Perhaps white's most interesting idea here after d4 is to play this move b4. This idea is known as a, as a gambit you can play in many Benoni-type openings, for example, when black plays b5 in the Banco gambit, but here you can play b4 without it even being a gambit, just to try to stop black from solidifying this advanced pawn with c5, and it also opens the line for your bishop to go target this pawn with bishop b2, 
and White's hoping that this advanced pawn here could actually be a target for their pieces. After b4, it's somewhat surprising that Black's most popular move here is actually f6, simply because they really need to get this pawn to e5 to have a chance to defend this pawn, otherwise this pawn's probably going to be uh, taken after bishop b2, and uh, this is the best way to do it, to make sure that Black can play e5 next move no matter what, even though this knight is controlling that square. They pulled together a sample line here. Let's say white plays e3, trying to challenge this pawn. Black continues on with e5, not only defending this d4 pawn, but also threatening this exposed b pawn. So white can play here c5, and now black can play a5, trying to tear down this pawn chain that white built, and white can't really defend it too easily with a3 because of the pin here on the a file. But white has a sacrifice here that we know from a lot of other openings where black plays an early f6, White could consider here playing knight takes e5, trying to exploit the weakened king's diagonal. It turns out black can actually kind of defend though, but the position remains very unclear. After f takes e5, queen h5, black cannot play g6. We know this trap from many other openings because after queen takes e5, there's a fork of the king and rook. But after king to e7, queen takes e5, and bishop e6, it looks like this king might be surviving for the time being. And even though white has a couple pawns for the piece, Black could be happy with their extra piece here. Black's going to try to finish up their development by playing moves like knight f6, or knight c6 chasing this queen away, and it's kind of hard for white to get other pieces involved in this attack. So the position remains pretty unclear here, but this piece sacrifice is considered to be pretty speculative, this knight takes e5 uh, piece sacrifice back here on move 6. So we've covered a lot of what can happen after knight f3, d5, and c4, Let's just briefly talk about how white could handle some other first moves from black, and really the key is a lot of these are going to transpose to other openings. That's really a key theme of the knight f3 opening, of the English opening with c4 on move 1. A lot of times they do transpose to a queen's pawn opening or a king's pawn opening, so it's just good to know all your transpositions if you're going to play these systems. For example, let's say black plays c5 here on move 1. White has a couple choices here. White could play e4 and enter a Sicilian defense, just as if the game had begun with e4, c5, knight f3. White could play c4 here, which is a symmetrical English opening, again, just as if the game had begun c4, c5. White could also just go for a king's Indian attack by playing g3, or white could play something like b3 and try to keep the game in original territory. Many things white could do here against c5. Also, knight f6 is a very popular first move. And again, many options here for white. You always have the king's Indian attack available with g3. You can play c4 and go for an English opening. You can play d4 and go for a queen's pawn opening. You could even play b4 here and go for kind of a rare line of the Polish opening. But in any case, the game is very likely to transpose to a line that's already known from some other opening. Because of this, I wouldn't really recommend playing knight f3 on move 1 to a beginner simply because this opening requires knowledge of many different opening systems, both from the, the king's pawn opening, the queen's pawn opening, the English opening. You don't really know which it's going to become, and you're giving black a lot of options here to steer the game in the way they like. But if you're familiar with a lot of these openings, and you want a first move that's very flexible and keeps black guessing about what system you're going to pick, then playing knight f3 on move 1 might be for you. Thank you very much for watching, and please make sure to sign up today on ChessPathways.com. I'll put a link down in the description. It's totally free to join, only takes 5 seconds, and I will send you a free move-by-move -move guide to chess thinking when you sign up. Thanks, and I'll see you there.